Ms. Jill Ingalls. As a representative for CSL White Rock, I recognize that I am a settler on this land. I am grateful and honored to live and operate on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples and other members of this gathering are working and living in the traditional land of many other Indigenous peoples. As CSL White Rock is committed to the vision of a loving, vibrant work world that works for all, we are committed to uplifting Indigenous voices, respecting the traditional lands, and working with communities toward reconciliation. I thank the First Peoples who continue to live and care for Mother Earth and all that is above and all that is below. CSL is an inclusive spiritual community and a learning center, and we honor all paths to the one. Our teaching is based on the four corner store stone beliefs. There is one, one source, one divine energy. It just makes it all happen. It is the source of all things and all life. And we are spirit. We are spirit. Imagine that inside of every cell of our body. We are spirit having that interesting human experience. And nothing outside of us needs to change in order for us to be happy. And we are here to walk each other home. Beautiful, beautiful community. Thank you. And I'm very happy to introduce again that wonderful Ivan as he returns. Ivan. Thanks, Jill. You caught me off a little bit off guard. <laughs> but that's what live services are about. So this is a new one and uh, kind of touches on the uh, theme of vulnerability. And if you feel like singing in the room or muted on Zoom, it has a really simple no words part. It starts like this. Never good enough, wondering why it won't last. I toss and turn at night, wake up before the light, chasing the ghosts of my past. a spinning wheel don't stop on something real it's like my whole world has crashed I can't get past these walls I climb and then I fall chasing the ghosts of my past to get back up, shake off this dirt and dust, ride that horse far and fast. Standing straight and tall, you'll never see me crawl, chasing the ghosts of my past. I won't 
have no peace until my search has ceased. It's just a matter of fact. I'm gonna track them down, bury them in the ground, chasing the ghosts of my past. And as always, you delivered. Thank you so much. That was amazing, absolutely amazing. I just have to sit in that for, for a bit. What a gift you have, this writing. And um, I'd like you to share what you're up to. Are you doing some more writing? Are you playing somewhere? What's happening? Well, the uh, yes, on the writing uh, with my main partner, John Bowman, uh, who co-wrote that with me. And... Uh, we, I have a show uh, in Central Langley at the Bez Arts Hub on Friday night, April 21. And uh, the wonderful Ran Singh is one of my guests, and I know he's uh, very popular with, with uh, the CSL group. And I'll have uh, two other guests, uh, 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 a, a lady that's traveling from Houston, Texas, Anna Alessandra, and uh, the wonderful twins, Fion, Brian, Brianne and Alana Finn Morris, who live in, we used to live in White Rock. They grew up down that way. And there we're, we'll have a nice show um, on April 21. Wow, that sounds delicious. I got to get my calendar out. It yep. just sounds wonderful. Thank you, Ranch. Thank you. I got Ranch on the brain when you're promoting them there. Thanks, Ivan. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, Good morning. I can see people now. I've been hiding back in this corner here because I'm no tech person today. And uh, it's just a bit of a, a different day for us. So it's, it, but it's all good. It's, it's always good. So this is my first talk as officially permanent senior minister. So thank you all for being here to witness me today and witness this amazing time of transformation. And it's Palm Sunday, so it's the sixth Sunday of Lent, which is uh, it's and is also known as Passion Sunday. I think I like Passion Sunday better. <laughs> what are we passionate about? We're passionate about, for me, that learning and growing and moving forward. So that is what we're stepping into here at CSL White Rock. So I'm, I'm just thrilled to have everybody here. So today we're gonna be uh, talking about vulnerability. Well, let's say this morning, I think I showed up in a little bit of vulnerability <laughs> by asking my husband to set up the tech <laughs> and knowing he can be a little bit uh, straight focused and forward. So everybody got to see a little bit of another side of me that I am not uh, there for. So, but it's great or that I experience at home sometimes, but he's just a loving man. So I have to give a shout out to Tony for coming in and stepping in and doing what he did for us this morning. It's always good to have those husbands that are super supportive. But I wanted to start off with, I've got two devices here going because I've with my quotes and things, but I wanted to start off with this quote from Ernest Holmes. He said, there is an in, ir irresistible potential pressing against everyone for self-expression. If we listen, we shall hear it. Not as a voice, but as a feeling, as a divine urge to express. And that is from creative living. And haven't we heard that divine urge of expressing already this morning with Ivan, with those beautiful songs that he, he wrote, as well as with his co-songwriter, co, uh, is that what it's called? Yes, <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice again. And Jill's lovely meditation, right? It was so beautiful, that surrender. And if we're surrendering and we're showing up in that space, 
is that not a form of vulnerability? Is that not a form of showing up and showing our heart and being seen in a new way, in a different way for what we are? So today's affirmation is I bring my own unique expression to life and create space, safe space for others. I don't know, I have, most of us here have been to some of the classes and done that uh, and, and worked through our classes and shown up on Sundays. And that is where I get to be vulnerable, where I get to show up and listen and create that space. I know a few of you have done classes here and have met prayer partners. I think Jill and Diane, I hope you don't mind me telling the story, but I know the two of them, our practitioners, met in a class and became prayer partners. And that was, what, 10 years ago now, I would say? That was about 13 years ago. 13 years ago. And here they are today expressing their love of the community by offering a free workshop, by <coughs> teaching us more about that affirmative prayer that is so important to the science of mind for this teaching. That is how everything is getting done, that in mind, and then we shift from there. And I'm so excited about the Prosperous Me class right now because that's what we're doing, 30 days, we jump on at 7.30 a.m. and do prayer together. We have a little check-in, try to keep it short and sweet, especially on Sundays. <laughs> but it's that time that we can show up in our pajamas, because that has happened. <laughs> and, but that's okay. It's We just record the, the sound so that throughout the day, we can play that affirmative prayer over and over again. Because that is when things shift. That is when, when we are in that space of knowing that truth of who we are and what is the truth, that we are one with that one. That is when things in our life start to mirror out. It's that ripple effect. So what we, what we see happening out in the world, that's just a reflection of what is happening within. <laughs> and that is a hard one to take sometimes. Because it's like, well, but there's all these bad things happening out there, you know? So how do I how do I take responsibility for that? And this is getting a little away from vulnerability, but anyways, it it'll it'll circle back. It'll circle back. But that's the thing. It's 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 knowing that we're being that responsible for ourselves and how we see the world the world and what we can do differently is our reaction. It's not necessarily um, that we're changing things at our own level, but we're, we change within ourselves though. So it might not, if you might not think, oh, if I just do this one thing, how's that gonna affect anything? But the thing is that one thing does affect everything because we are all one and it is the one mind. So if we are a one mind, any little shift that we make in our consciousness towards prosperity, towards love, towards joy, that is going to ripple out. And that is why we're all here as this community together. To ripple out the joy, whether our, our vision statement is to be a loving, vibrant world that works for all. And, and it starts right here, right now. So what I'd like everybody to do is just take a moment and you people on, or you people, not, and people on Zoom, sorry, you're not you people, you're loving humans <laughs> as well. <laughs> but just take a moment and I'd like you to close your eyes. Just close those eyes and breathe in and out. Allowing your body to settle, allowing yourself to settle in. And now, whether you're in the room or on Zoom, I'd like you to open your eyes and look around you. And on Zoom, look at the boxes, but here in the room, look at all the faces that are here. The faces that you see, because these are the people that are on this journey with you. They are here with you. And this is the peace, right? This is the community. Like, I don't know, I have a tear almost. It's just this, the love that is in this room and on Zoom when we're together is just palpable. And that is, that is what we want to ripple out into the world. 
So today's topic about pros uh, no, prosperity, I was talking about prosperity, but we're talking about vulnerability. But I'd like to share a quote by, this is a bit of a long quote by Brene Brown. But when we're vulnerable, she says, to let ourselves be seen, deeply seen, vulnerably seen, to love with our whole hearts, even though there's no guarantee. And that's really hard. And I can tell you as a parent, it's excruciatingly difficult to practice gratitude and joy in those moments of terror when we're in wondering, can I really love this much? Can I believe this, this passionately? Can I be so fierce about this? And just to stop and, and, and just to be able to stop instead of catastrophizing what might happen your day, I'm just so grateful because to feel this vulnerable means I'm alive. To feel this vulnerable means I'm alive. And the last, which I think is probably the most important, this is still Brene Brown talking, is to believe that we're enough. Because when we work from a place I believe that says I'm enough. Then we stop screaming and start listening. We're kinder, we're gentler to the people around us. And the best part is, she didn't say that, but this is, I think it is, <laughs> is we're kinder and gentler to ourselves. So you imagine a world where we're kinder and gentler to ourselves and where we can stop and love ourselves enough to show up in a way that people see us and allow them that space. Because I know a lot of times I like to hide behind that facade of, oh yeah, I've got it all together. I don't have, you know, dirty white shoes on this morning that I forgot to wash, or <laughs> I don't have a grumpy husband sometimes. You know, those things that they're life, they happen. And, but it's all good. Because at each moment, it teaches me something different. And then I know that I'm also, if I'm feeling it, I'm alive. And I'm able to be expressing out into the world. And I know sometimes, I don't know if this has ever happened to anybody else. But sometimes when I'm vulnerable and I show up and I start to share things with people, sometimes I get a vulnerability hangover. Has anybody ever had that? <laughs> right? Because I love what they say is that Vulnerability, I'm just going to refer to my notes here because I want to get it right, is that what it is not, vulnerab vulnerability is not oversharing or dumping inappropriate amounts of emotions or personal history with wild abandon. No, it is not being vulnerable for the sake of saying, oh, look at me, I'm sharing, <clears throat> right? It is... Um, it's the tone and the motive of vulnerability and the sense that we're highlighting is one that is born from that desire to fully express oneself for the pur purpose of authenticity. And when we're authentic, we get to have that connection with another person. So to be vulnerable is not to be without boundaries, nor is it to be a doormat. But vulnerability is not weakness, but instead, instead, it's that conscious choice, that conscious choice to express thoughts, feelings, and, a, and desires in a way that serve to nurture an authentic life. So what stops us sometimes from being vulnerable? It's maybe fear. I know for me, sometimes it could be shame. It's all those things that are underneath. And sometimes I'm not even conscious of it. I don't know if that happens to you guys, but sometimes I'll, I'll just be showing up in an image or showing up in a way and then I'll stop and I'm like, who was that person? <laughs> what just happened? And then I'll realize, okay, how can I get back? How can I get back? Oh yeah, the breath. If I start to take that breath, I can remember and go back because that's one of my goals in life is that as a, in my ministry, what I want is I want people to remember the truth of who they really are. And I want them to fall back in love with themselves. 
right? When we were that little baby, that little person, and we just lived in that wild abandon, being on the slip and slide or doing whatever it was that we did when we were little, it's to bring back that joy because it's still there. That little girl inside of me who loved doing that is still there. But when do I let her play? When do I let her out? When do I show that side of me? Well, you guys get to see it a bit more often than most, but, <laughs> but it's good to be able to do that and show up in a way. And it's okay, whatever, however we show up in the world, as long as it is not meant to harm anyone, it's the kindness, it's the love, it's the joy. That is the peace that we, we want to continue on with. So I have a quote here from, and this is, this is Ernest Holmes. And I love this quote. The divine pattern would be imperfect without you. The divine pattern would be imperfect without you. So now that's kind of hard to imagine. But remember when we looked around the room earlier and we looked at everybody else who was here, but they're looking at you and their experience of what is happening would not be the same if you were not part of that tapestry, not part of that fabric. I remember Reverend Terry used to always say about the tapestry, you know, it looks all beautiful on the, in, on the outside. And then you look back and there's all the little threads and all the little strings and the little knots. But that's each of us because we all make up the whole. We all make up that one. So he says, the divine pattern would be imperfect without you. Dare to be yourself. Stand in wonder before the majestic and the might the beauty and the power of that divine presence which seeks expression through your individual life. So again, it's that divine presence which seeks expression through each of our individual lives. And that is in, of course, Ernest Holmes at This Thing Called You. That is always one of the best books. He's always got some great things. But could you imagine, so what if we all said together, I know everybody on, on Zoom, what if we filled it in with said to ourselves and out loud even, I'm going to encourage us all to say this out loud together. I'll repeat it first and then I'll get everybody to do it as well. Is the divine pattern would be imperfect without, I'm going to say my name, Tamara, and I want each of you to say your own name. Okay, so we're going to play a little bit. Everybody on Zoom, you with me? Hopefully, play with me here. So the divine pattern would be imperfect without Tamara. Yay, I didn't hear any other Tamaras. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got it. But that's the thing, right? We're here to be that expression, that one. That, that There's nobody else like us. And that's marvelous. Could you imagine how boring the world would be if we all showed up exactly the same? And I love that Savannah is going to be teaching that workshop coming up on April 11th. And if you have, want more information, you can talk to her afterwards. But it's about building those relationships and realizing sometimes why do we attach? Why do we not attach? And what are those parts of us? that are maybe cling on to things, but it's becoming that whole person, becoming that safe space that I talked about earlier, that, that we are safe to be who we are. So why do we think vulnerability is important? Well, it becomes the necessary action of both self-expression, but the big one for me is connection. However, one should not be tricked into thinking that vulnerability is an easy task, nor should we discount the fact that individual and society influences often create barriers to its, to its being, to us showing up that way. But the adventure begins in conversation, when we can have those conversations with you about each other. That's why I love class. And even in the morning, when we have that quick check-in, it's a quick conversation. And, and knowing that we're connected with like-minded people. And it's the willingness to engage and explore our own authentic lives 
And it, when we do that, invites others to do the same. I don't know, has anybody done anything where somebody's been like, wow, thank you so much for either saying that, or I'm so inspired that you did that, because that's inspired me. I know recently, um, last weekend, I was, I was away. I was up in Kelowna. I went to see my brother and my dad, and I had the great privilege of um, checking in at the Kelowna Center for Spiritual Living and saw our dear friend, Reverend Karen Wilson, speak. And uh, recently, her mom just transitioned. So it was great to be able to be there uh, to support her. And But she inspired me. Her, her mom just passed away a week ago. And she gave this amazing heartfelt talk about her mom. I was listening and I'm like, I don't know how you did that to get up there and to be that vulnerable and to share what was going on for you. And then I was inspired again by my brother, him and his wife. There's been a little bit of stuff going on in their lives, but he's decided to take on his own journey and to step into his life a little differently than he has before and so he signed up and he was doing this diet and so he said Tam can he calls me Tam can you come up and help me cook and teach me how to do that I know he's 50 we won't say how old but anyways <laughs> it's okay his wife has always been so lovely to help him through that so he's like I need to figure this out and so he actually inspired me to start eating a little healthier again he joined Noom and he was he was working on this um, menu plan so we were chopping and laughing together but I was like oh hey this is great so him by showing up and asking me to help him to support him in this goal that he had inspired me and my brother let me tell you he's not normally the one to ask for help I don't know if anybody here is like that it's hard that it's hard to ask for help I'm sure I know I can be that way I'm like I've got this I can do this I, I got it but sometimes I need that Jill can you hold my hand please <laughs> or I don't know if Marnie's still there but Marnie can you hold my hand please on zoom and, you know, but she did like this morning, we were short people asked my best friend, Marnie, can you jump on zoom, manage, let people in, do the thing. And she's like, yeah, I've got, I've got your back. I've got you there. And I asked my husband to help. So I was able through this teaching, I was able to start showing up rather than in that facade of I've got this. I'm like, mm, you know what? I don't, I don't. Can you help? And people showed up and helped. And even everybody here showing up today to do the things that they did. We had, you know, even Betsy bringing Anne in today. That's so lovely. It's so good to see so many people. But yeah, so just thinking about the people that we're here on this journey with. Oh, I see my time is coming through. So let's wrap this up a little bit. So authenticity. That's where we get our meaningful connection. And that meaningful connection is born out of vulnerability. And it allows us to build trust and intimacy in our relationships. And it helps us foster empathy and understanding and increase our self-worth. And it builds relationship with those who serve to support us or love us and work together in partnership and community and work through the process and emotions and increase our own self-awareness. Remember, vulnerability is not a weakness. It's about showing up and being seen, even in the face of fear and shame. The call is to begin to examine areas of our lives where we've been resistant for whatever reason to be vulnerable, Areas we're hustling for our own worthiness. I like that hustling. That's a Brene Brown term for sure. Hustling for our own worthiness has created this gap between who we are on the inside and who we project. I did a course once where they talked about the circles. So you have your circle of who you are and who you think you are. And then they, they maybe cross over or who, who you really are and who you project to the world. And there may be, I don't know if anybody could see that, but there's that little tiny crossover there, that little tiny crossover. But what the goal is, is to get them fully 
over each other so that we're showing up exactly who we are. Because if we go back to Ernest Holmes, the divine pattern would be imperfect without you. You are important. You are enough. You are love expressed in this time. I'm just seeing if I have anything else I wanted to say. Hmm. So I'll Aaron, end with my last quote. Ernest Holmes again. Remember that you rob no person when you discover your own good. You limit no person when you express a greater degree of livingness. You hinder no person's evolution when you consciously enter into the kingdom of your good and possess it today. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. thanks. <laughs> so let's just take this into prayer as I was reminded, which is so good. And knowing that there is one life, one love, one universal divine mind, and it is operating right here, right now, in and through each of us today. I know that as I speak my word in first person today, that I speak this word for myself, and I encourage you to take it for yourselves. So I know that I am one with that one mind, that creative expression and today I show up and claim my joy, my awe, my love. That is all things. It is good. It is always good. I know that I am prosperous in all areas of my life. I am health. I am abundance. I am inspired. I am focused. And I am truth expressed. I am authentic. So knowing that I am all these God qualities of that one mind, of that divine living spirit, I know that each person here is that as well. So I know as we step into this next phase of our lives, of our being this next moment, I am so grateful grateful for this time together, grateful for being here, grateful for all the things that came to this one point right now and knowing that it is unfolding in perfection. So I release these words, the law of mind, knowing right action is already happening. It is already so. And ask you to join me in saying, and so it is. Thank you, Tamara. That was... Uh very inspirational. Um, I think I might go off. Um, what am I doing here? Oh, script. I think I'm going to go off script here for a minute. I just want to say how grateful I am for this community, for the teachings, for Ernest Holmes, for my ministers, my prax sisters, and all of you. And it's this gift of you, your beautiful energy, all of it, that fills my heart. And this is what moves me to return it back to this center. So, you may wish to join me in putting your hand on your heart and affirm with me divine love within blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give and that I all that I receive and so it is and I know that we live in a very rich, abundant, beautiful world. Thank you. And at this time, I just want to turn it back to that wonderful Ivan. Thank you. Thanks again.
Hey guys, you're on mute. Oh my gosh, I just said all that and you didn't hear me on Zoom. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jade, for telling me I was on mute. I just had a whole great, that was the best part of my whole talk, you guys. Now. I was just saying thank you. It's time to say goodbye. Stay for the workshop. And if you're on Zoom, <laughs> these guys get to hear it again. It's going to be the same link. Um, and yeah, stop by and say goodbye. Oh, the workshop's going to start at noon. So grab a bite to eat. I think there's a some muffins here, some snacks here for people that are in person, but for people on Zoom, if you need to pop off, you can do that and then just join back in with us. So thanks everyone for coming again. And Ivan, I just, I was raving about you, but you didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tamara. <laughs> You're welcome. And I'll definitely be there on the 21st. I wouldn't miss be it both you and Ranch. I mean, my dream come true right there. <laughs> Don't tell my husband that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks everyone and everybody on Zoom and thanks for Jade stepping in to help with our tech and Marnie. We'll see you guys all later. Have a great day. Bye. Nice to see you, Claire and everyone. Bye everyone. Happy Sunday. Palm Sunday. <laughs> nice to hear you, Kelly.